My name is Adrienne St. Pierre and I'm the curator here at the Barnum Museum in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm so glad to have you uh, here with us today. Dr. Sahar Salim has come here from Cairo University and she's going to be talking with me today about the Barnum Museum's Egyptian mummy. So uh, we've been on this journey of discovery in the last few years and really um, are excited to have you here to help us learn more. Could you tell us a little bit about why the ancient Egyptians chose to mummify pe people when they passed away? What is, what is that all about? <laughs> It's, it's all driven from their belief that um, that this life is it's not the end, that uh, there is a resurrection and there is uh, the life after mm -hmm. this. And also they believe that um, in this life, after this exact body, we are going to use. So this body has to be uh, preserved, mm -hmm. has to be beautiful and has to be also protected with all the charms and the amulets in order to, to just withstand the journey. The concept of not only to be preserved, but also to be functioning and beautiful. So uh, turning to the, the science now to help us understand um, more about individuals who lived thousands of years ago, what are the techniques that um, you as a radiologist uh, uses to, to study um, yeah. mummies. Yes. In the CT scan, uh, it, it showed us uh, the, the, the body in a more detailed uh, way and with also the advancement of the computer with the software stuff, one can see a mummy without just touching anything. You mm -hmm. can see the coffin, the wrapping and the mummy and by the computer you can unwrap virtually yes <laughs> and and have to see the face reconstruction you see the surface and you see the the, the what is the, the the bones look like and what what is this person uh, a man a woman a child what's the age uh, what are the diseases they may have suffered mm -hmm. in during their life what is the mummification style because the ancient egyptians uh, did not reveal their secret till now. Can you tell uh, how somebody passed away? If uh, the cause of the death is, is marked by in the, in the bones or in the remaining uh, soft tissues, uh, we, we can tell uh, how they, uh, they died. In several cases we did that. In the case of the Barnum Museum's mummy, uh, she had a lot of dental problems. It, appears, a very, very worn teeth. So she has been suffering uh, for um, a long time with uh, teeth that cannot be explained by only aging and like changes due to age for the teeth attrition mm -hmm. or so. No, it's, it's, it's more um, than that. Uh, thinking about her, what, why she had this bad uh, condition? Did she have a, uh, a predisposing factor? like diabetes uh, or something that would predispose for infection? Was it uh, just a, maybe a, a bad manner of, of eating, but they didn't have sugar? It's not it, dental it, decay it's, from it's, sugar. Yeah, it's from <laughs> sugar, but, but from what other uh, uh, type? Uh, could this have killed her? Uh, yes, this mm. could be the, the reason such a bad uh, uh, teeth. I, I often hear that, oh, well, there was sand in the food or the food was very coarse and that that's why teeth are, are, are worn down. Is that true or maybe This not? is something that um, I've, I've also heard about it, but just because I, I question everything and I don't take everything as, a, as a, a reality. Just so for me, this is a theory that I cannot accept that much because with such an advanced civilization, I wonder why they would eat bread with sand. The other thing that I, uh, may um, just think how people get um, this result because of the funerary bread, the bread that they, they baked or they put for uh, in the tombs mm -hmm. for the life after. And this could be sort of representative type of, of bread that could be filled of sand just to be preserved and to withstand the journey. Uh, uh, having um, sand in the, in the bread in the tombs doesn't mean that they will eat it. Ah, 
Yes. And so this is like uh, because of the sand in the bread and that's why there is attrition and there is wear and tear. This is something that I, I question this very much. Well, that, that's fascinating. There are just so many um, facets to explore um, in un unlocking these secrets. Of, uh, yeah, and, and most important that I, we don't have to adopt what uh, other people said as a, uh, as a, a fact. Some day we will reach um, the the real uh, the, the real truth. What are the kinds of things you're looking for to help us figure out how old she might have been at the time she passed away? You mentioned that her teeth are extremely worn, yet her body uh, was in pretty good condition. Yeah. When a, a mommy uh, is for um, a, a young individual, a child, or just in juvenile, when the the bones are not yet uh, fused together and get the skeleton, the mature skeleton, it, will, it is easier to, to know because we have a sort of a um, timeline and by knowing this we can get to know the, the age and also from the dentition and from the teeth and maybe also earlier. The bones that they would fuse at, at, at later age Okay, for example, uh, the, this here and at the, at, the, at the clavicle and at uh, the end of the clavicle, this is at, at a, a later age and um, maybe also we will look at uh, the part of the, the pelvis, the symphysis pubis, we just open it uh, virtually, of course, and look at the surface mm -hmm. and to see what, what age, but still we would, would depend also on the degeneration of the body. Um, is it a middle age or an, an older age uh, or so? We would accept an age with the five years uh, um, window or 10 years um, uh, like window. How does one determine gender in looking at a mummy? As I mentioned for many, many years, over a century, um, it was thought that the mummy we had belonged to the coffin, which seemed to indicate it was for a male priest named Paib or Pabasa might be a more correct interpretation. Um, with the CT scans that have been done, that's been called into question. So could you give us a clue as to how one reads the skeleton to help determine the, the sex of the individual? Yeah. So um, I like after puberty, certain bones would be affected by the hormones. Mm -hmm. And these are mainly the skull and the pelvis, and not all the parts of the pelvis. Some parts of the pelvis, uh, pelvic bones, they are affected by hormones, and that's why we will have a sort of uh, a biomorphology. That means that we have a, a man and woman. Uh, morphology of the skull and the, the pelvis would look different because they have different um, hormones. Mm -hmm. That's how we can tell from the, for example, from this, the, the skull, from the size all over this, this, the, the, the skull size, uh, the smoothness of the bone, the smoothness of the, the curves, how robust or how delicate the features uh, or the bony features would look like. This is what would tell you a man uh, from a woman. And the pelvis uh, also the same, the, especially the anterior part of the pelvis, which is affected by the, the hormones. And why is that? Because the female pelvis should be accommodate um, a child uh, birth. But um, unfortunately, it's not always black and white. Uh, like this is, uh, uh, the skull of a female should be delicate, but some, some female skulls are just like robust uh, as well. The, the pelvis, we, we have four shapes of the, of the pelvis, from like a, a, a complete man, we said like black, to a, a full woman, we said that this is white, but there is a, a shade of uh, gray mm -hmm. um, in between. Still, there are a window for more uh, technology to get in the mummy studies, we have the DNA. Yes. That would tell you that this is a, a man or a, a, a woman. And this could be what, hap what was happening, uh, the uh, roller coaster 
of uh, the journey with the, with the mummy at the, at the Barnum. You mentioned uh, DNA testing, but how does one go about that with um, human remains that are thousands of years old? What does it take to get information, uh, DNA information? For the DNA, you have questions to be answered. For example, when we are struggling with the, uh, the, uh, the, the sex of, the, of, of this uh, individual, so the DNA would help when we are uh, looking for relationship. Um, so uh, comes with family burial or so do they relate to each other this would would, would help because it will give you the the percentage of a lineage of, uh, of a father son uh, for example uh, relationship uh, or, or so and now also there is advancement of the DNA with the genome uh, that even we, c we can tell the diseases and in the case of, of the Barnum Museum mummy where well, she's out of context. We don't know with whom she was buried, so, you know, it's not like we can trace her or connect her to other um, individuals, but as you say, maybe it could tell us, well, she is female <laughs> or, or not, uh, and perhaps whether the um, uh, septicemia was from the dental abscesses was what killed her in the end. Right, right, and there are also other other uh, other tests that that yeah. uh, have potential importance. Could you just tell us a little bit about um, women's roles in ancient Egypt? Um, I'm thinking that a lot of people have bring certain assumptions to their understanding of what a woman's life might have been like, you know, uh, four thousand years ago. Um, just briefly, if you could tell us a little bit about um, about what women did, or what was their status or role in society? Did they did they have much control over their lives? From from day one of her birth, um, the the woman or the girl was very much accepted in family. Mm -hmm. So the family they cared about all children. Uh, no matter their sex, uh, male or uh, females or so. So from day one, she's accepted. She is pampered, she is loved. And you can see the statues of um, um, Akhnaton, the father of Tutankhamun, and, he, and his, his daughter, little daughter on his lap, and he is kissing her mm -hmm. and, and, and caressing her. So this is the love that the, a girl would receive from day one of her life. And also, the children were considered the soldiers of the old age, or the staff of old age. This, they will uh, be there for their parents, and mm -hmm. that's why they were all taken care of. She was also educated. She, she had uh, uh, her, uh, her tutoring, and, uh, and uh, we, we, have, we find this beautiful statue of Sinamot, who was the, the tutor of uh, um, uh, uh, Nefrot, which is uh, the, the daughter of Hatshepsut, and how he is embracing her. This is how the girl would be embraced by the tutor in education, and she's a girl. Uh -huh. So she received education, and we know by name uh, women who were physicians, doctors in ancient Egypt. More, more than that, they were professors of medicine. So there were faculty, uh, female doctors, who taught other female physicians and not uh, midwives. So she could have reached that level of profession. And also she had uh, legal rights. She had legal rights to choose her husband, to divorce him, to have a prenup of the things that she's bringing in. Uh, to go and file a complaint and in, in the court, to have her own business, to buy and sell, everything with no guardian, with no male guardian, something that other ancient nations envied. Later when the Greek came and, in, and they conquered Egypt and they, they had their community there, so, so uh, this, this is the Ptolemaic uh, period, so like 2,500 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. So at that time there were two communities, there, there were the, the Egyptian community and there were the Greek community. So imagine 
that uh, the uh, Egyptian woman, she had more power and uh, she can go and sell and buy with no male guardian, while the Greek woman, she had a guardian. So many of the Greek women, they would envy the Egyptian woman for all the authorities or all the rights uh, that uh, they had. Moreover, the women, ancient Egyptians, were, were fond of life more than death. Mm. Although we found that, like, the, their uh, funerary stuff, we think, think, okay, so this is a death community. No, this is a community that is full of life, outgoing life, pampered life. So they, they had a lot of a makeup, hairdressers, uh, um, uh, anti-aging uh, 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 creams, wigs, night, nice uh, garments, parties, uh, um, fest festivities. And so this is also part of her life. So I would think also that this is the aspect of her life, just going along, uh, dressed well, uh, Having uh, having fun, <laughs> so this is was, was an important part of the life of uh, not only uh, women in ancient Egypt but also for the whole uh, the community. Well, that that's extraordinary and and wonderful, really, to to hear. And well, who wouldn't envy <laughs> envy a, a culture like that and to be a woman in ancient Egypt? 